Hi, Larry Elterman here, and if you've watched my previous videos about cycle stop valves, you'll know I'm not a big fan of cycle stop valves, but never mind that for today. For today, I'm going to assume you have your heart set on a cycle stop valve. Well, in that case, the least I can do for you is show you how to make your own cycle stop valve that costs less and is better than the original cycle stop valve. The original cycle stop valve costs 224. I will be able to make a show you how to make a cycle stop valve for only $180. Not only that, but it will result in less cycles. It will be more efficient. It will result in less pump runtime. It will do everything that the normal CSV valve does, but better. Are there any downsides? Yes. Easier to install? No, it's more difficult to install. Simpler? No, it's more complicated. So I guess you can't get everything, but if you're willing to put the effort in, you'll get a better cycle stop valve for less money. So here is the equipment you'll be needing to build this cycle stop valve, this DIY cycle stop valve. You need an electronically controlled valve. And what this is, is when electricity is supplied to the valve, the valve closes. When there's no electricity, supplied to the valve, the valve opens. This is called a solenoid valve. It's available at Amazon for about 46 bucks. This thing here is a flow detector. Now keep in mind that a flow detector is very different than a pressure sensor because you can have high pressure with no flow and you can have low pressure with no flow and you can have high pressure with flow and you can have low pressure with flow. So this detects flow, not pressure. And this is available at Amazon for $23.39. And this thing here, it sort of looks like a cycle stop valve, but it's not the same. It's simpler. It's just a pressure reducing valve. It doesn't have the extra features, quote unquote features, that a cycle stop valve does. But it only costs about $82 on Amazon versus $224. Then you'll need some miscellaneous pieces, pipes, elbows, or wires. And you'll be able to build your own cycle stop valve better than the original. Okay, so don't worry, I promise I'll show you how to make this DIY cycle stop valve. But in the meantime, please be patient while I progress through a series of examples to show how a cycle stop valve works, what its problems are, and how you can build your own better version of a cycle stop valve. I want to take you step by step because that is my nature. Okay, I will be setting up a scenario to help me explain things. The first thing I'll talk about in the scenario is the pump. I'm using a typical 1.5 horsepower pump. It has a maximum PSI of 78. At zero PSI, it has a flow of 21 gallons per minute. At 40 PSI, that goes down to 19. At 50 PSI, we go down to 13 gallons per minute. And at 60 PSI, which is significant because that's the, that's the final pressure of the pressure tank, we're down to about 8 gallons per minute. Now, by the way, uh, this is a real pump. I didn't make up the figures. Uh, it's, I got this from a real catalog. It's a Lucky Pro pump model, whatever. And this is the pump curve for this particular pump. Okay, so let's get back to the diagram. So this pump is controlled by a 40-60 pressure switch and a typical pressure tank. This is a very normal typical system. No special valves installed yet. And in my scenario, I'm using the system to power the house, for water for the house, and water for a sprinkler. And I'm assuming that for the sprinkler, we need exactly 50 PSI. If there's more than 50 PSI, it shoots into the neighbor's yard and the neighbor gets angry. And if it's less than 50 PSI, well then it doesn't shoot as far as it's supposed to and we're running this for two hours a day. So what is the problems in this current setup? Well the first problem is that the pressure is fluctuating between 40 and 60 so we're not getting what we want for the sprinkler. And the second problem which may not be a problem but for some people maybe it's a problem is that the pump is going to be cycling on and off during the two hours that we're using the sprinkler system. Okay, so here is the next step in our evolution. I've installed a pressure reducing valve set to 50 PSI in the line going to the sprinkler. 
but this really doesn't help us all that much. It keeps it from going over 50 psi, so it doesn't shoot into the neighbor's yard, but now it fluctuates between 40 and 50 pounds, and you still have the pump cycling on and off. So this isn't a very good solution. It only solves one problem, that of going into the neighbor's yard. Okay, so here is the next step in our evolution. I've moved the pressure reducing valve from here, from the line going to the sprinkler, and I've moved it now between the pump and the pressure tank. And now we've solved a couple of more problems. The pressure coming out of here will always be exactly 50 pounds now, and the water sprinkle will be very happy. In addition, because this pressure reducing valves keeps any more than 50 pounds from going through here, the pressure tank will never fill up. It will stay at exactly 50 pounds, and the pump will continue to run and will not stop for as long as the sprinkler is on. But uh-oh, we still have a problem. After you turn the sprinkler off, the pressure reducing valve will keep any more water from coming through after it reaches 50 psi, and the pressure tank will never fill up, the pressure switch will never tell the pump to go off, and the pump will run forever. And that, of course, is not good. So now we say, aha, I know how to solve this problem. I will buy a cycle stop valve. And a cycle stop valve is different than a pressure reducing valve in this way. After the, after the water is turned off, okay, and the pressure reaches 50 pounds, okay, a normal pressure reducing valve will not let any more water through. But a cycle stop valve has a special little bypass so that water trickles through at one gallon per minute and slowly fills up the pressure tank until it reaches 60 pounds and then the pump will go off. So it seems like, wow, this cycle stop valve solves all our problems. Oh, but wait, there is a problem. If we use a tiny pressure tank, as the cycle stop valve company recommends, then we have a problem because the water is not just going to the sprinkler, it's going to the house. And now every time you flush your toilet, every time you wash your hands, every time you wash the dishes, the pump is going to go on. So we've turned our cycle stop valve into a cycle go, go, go valve. Oh no, this is not what we want. Okay, so let's see what happens when we replace our tiny pressure tank with a much bigger pressure tank, a 120 gallon pressure tank, which gives 30 gallons of drawdown or pressurized water. A 120 gallon tank does not give 120 gallons of pressurized water, it only gives 30. If you want to understand why, see my other video about pressure tanks. At any rate, take my word for it, we get 30 gallons of drawdown or 30 gallons of pressurized water. So let's think about the house now. The house is happy because now you can do things like wash your hands, one gallon, flush the toilet, three gallons, and the pump does not go on every single time you use a small item in the house. It, it doesn't go on until the 15 gallons or the 30 gallons of drawdown is used up. Okay, so the house is happy. Uh, the water sprinkler, it's somewhat happy. The problem is it's, it's not really a constant uh, uh, pressure system now. Here's why. When we start off, we have 60 pounds of pressure. And so the sprinkler is going to go on, and it's going to be uh, too strong. It's going to shoot into the neighbor's yard. Slowly, the pressure will go down and down and down. It will get under 50, and then when it gets under 50, it won't be shooting far enough. And finally, it will get down to 40 pounds. The pump will go on. The pressure will go back up to 50 pounds. And then finally, when it hits 50 pounds, the cycle stop valve will stabilize the system. So it's not too bad a situation. You get an a initial period of instability, but then uh, after a while, the pressure, the cycle stop valve will take over and you'll get your exactly 50 pounds PSI. And because this is re restricting it to 50 pounds coming through here, the, the pressure tank will never fill up and the pump will continue to run and we won't get any cycles. And after we turn off the water sprinkler, then the uh, cycle stop valve will allow water to go through here at a trickle, one gallon per minute, and fill up the pressure tank. And therein lies the problem, because we have 
we're going to be filling half a pressure tank. Remember, it had 50 pounds of pressure. We want to get to 60. So it has half a pressure tank to fill. That means it has to fill 15 gallons. But the CSV only allows one gallon per minute. So it's going to take 15 minutes to fill up this pressure tank. Now, if we ran an unrestricted pump into this pressure tank, it would only take about one and a half minutes to fill. So instead of running for one and a half minutes, we're going to run for 15 minutes. So now our cycle stop valve becomes a run pump, run, run, run valve. And that's not what we want either. OK, so now that you know the problems with a regular cycle stop valve, how can we build our do-it-yourself cycle stop valve that is neither a cycle go, go, go valve nor a cycle run pump run 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 valve so let's get started let's uh, revisit the, um, the parts list again just to remind ourselves we have the we have the valve electronically controlled electric controlled when there's current it closes when there's no current it's open so it's a normally open electrically controlled solenoid valve we have here a flow detector it detects when there's flow when there's no flow the switch is open when there's flow the switch is closed okay the circuit is closed current can run we have our pressure reducing valve simple pressure reducing valve and our miscellaneous parts okay so here is a diagram of our diy cycle stop valve system now to explain this system, we're going to start with an initial state. The pressure tank is full at 60 PSI. No water is being used, so there's no flow. And the pump is not on, of course. So this is our initial state. Now, let's take a look at the flow sensor first. The flow sensor is when there's no flow, it's open, which means no electricity can pass through the flow sensor. Okay, so if we look at the solenoid, it wants to get electricity from the current source by going through the flow sensor back to the current source and into the solenoid. But this is open because there's no flow, so no electricity is flowing through, and thus this valve is open because it's the normal open state. Okay, so let's suppose that somebody in the house flushes the toilet. Well, when they flush the toilet, the flow sensor is going to detect flow and the circuit will be closed, which will allow current to go through to this solenoid and this valve here will close. But it's not going to make any difference in this case because there's still plenty of water left in the pressure tank. So the water is going to come directly from the pressure tank because we had started with 60 pounds and it's going to go to the house and the pump will not go on. The PRV will not be involved. And you could flush the toilet again, you could wash your hands, and as long as the pressure remains above 40 PSI, this whole system is not going to be activated. So let's consider what happens now if somebody turns on the sprinkler system. Well, first of all, the flow is going to be detected, so current is going to flow through here, and this valve is going to close. That won't matter at first, because at first you're going to continue to draw water from the pressure tank, and, and the pressure is going to go down and down and down until it hits 40 PSI, and then the pressure switch is going to activate the pump, and the pump will go on. Now the pump will start to pump water through this PRV into the sprinkler system. Now it can't go through here, because the flow sensor has activated this solenoid and closed the valve, so the only, only the water could go only through this PRV, and it's going to be set to 50 PSI max, okay? And it's going to go through here to the sprinkler at 50 PSI. It's going to refill the tank, but it's only going to fill the tank at 50, up to 50 PSI, so the pressure switch is never going to be activated. And just like with a normal cycle stop valve, the water will continue to flow to the sprinkler system at exactly 50 PSI, and the pump will not go off. OK, now let's see what happens when we turn off the sprinkler system. When we turn off 
the sprinkler system, all of a sudden there's not going to be any water flow. Because there's not going to be any water flow, this switch here will open and will not allow current to flow through it. Because no current is flowing through, this valve, which is normally open, will open up. Now the pump will be able to bypass the PRV, go directly through this valve, and fill up the pressure tank without being restricted by the PRV. So it will fill up the pressure tank using the full capacity of the pump. It will no longer be restricted, and it will fill up this pressure tank in about one and a half minutes instead of the 15 minutes it would take if we were using the cycle stop valve. Okay, so you can see that this system does everything that the normal cycle stop valve does, but better. It allows for a larger pressure tank, so we don't get the go, go, go situation every time somebody flushes a toilet. And it, uh, it still sets the uh, sprinkler to 50, 50 pounds PSI, but the advantage now is that you can use a big tank, and when you turn off the system, it doesn't take forever to refill the, the pressure tank. So I think this is a pretty cool system, uh, and I think it will work. I'm pretty sure it will work. I do, however, want to give a disclaimer. I have not actually tested this design. I don't have the resources to set up a lab and test it. I live in a small apartment. There's no way I can test this. I'm 99% sure it will work. I can't see why it would not work. But if anybody sees a problem in this design, please let me know. I'm open to your comments. And if anybody implements this design, please, for sure, let me know. I'd be very interested to know how it works. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And more still, I hope somebody tries this design and lets me, lets me know how it works. That's my real hope. Thank you very much, and goodbye.